The same chicken fried uterus as Hall of Fame c***er's Molly Hatchet, and blessed with the poetic southern soul of wordsmiths William Faulkner and Luther Ken. Born by the same chicken fried uterus as Hall of Fame c***er's Molly Hatchet, and blessed with the poetic southern soul of wordsmiths William Faulkner and Luther Campbell, Fred Durst has sought to ease the sorrow of lost love through artistic expression, all the while receiving throaty acclaim in his dizzying ascent at Interscope Records. The Limp Biscuit story is next on Behind the Music That Sucked. <laughs> The son of blacklisted Disney animator Rasputin Durst, Fred led a happy, heavily tattooed childhood. But even the most caring of parents cannot protect their children from the horror of canine herpes forever. Skittles was very sick, Fred. Ha! <laughs> Look, he's dancing! Music and narcotics became Fred's passion. And although Durst displayed no musical talent whatsoever, he did demonstrate an uncanny understanding of showmanship. It was then Fred made a life-altering realization. I love money. Fred retreated further into his art, filling notebooks with the names of people he wanted dead. One of the names at the top of the list was childhood friend and future Limp Bizkit guitarist, Jimmy Buffett. I used to say to him, Freddie, you ought to catch a cool ocean breeze and just sail that hurt away. But Fred was tired of masturbating into his lactose intolerant father's milk substitute, and he and the musically gifted Buffett began writing songs together. Look it, look it. Cookie the Wookie Bookie! Soon, Fred, Jimmy, and the newest band member Skittles took their act to the streets. Hey, good looking! Be back to pick you up later! Little did Fred Durst know that his life was about to change forever. Celine Dion was in Florida, co hosting MTV's Bitch House with Japanese Gen X novelist Banana Yoshimoto. Domo arigato! You talking smack to me, you eyed bitch! Durst had found his soulmate. Durst? Thank you, no. That gives me gas. Despite the fact that Celine was already married and had no idea who he was, Fred followed the diva home and moved into her Montreal apartment. Their breakup was bittersweet. During his four days of hard time in Canadian jail, Fred turned to music to keep the darkness at bay. With Fred detained and Skittles increasingly withdrawn, Jimmy formed a new band. Though initial ticket sales for Jimmy Buffett's Early Bird Biscuit and Gravy review were strong, the band's songs lack the magical incoherence of the early Durst Buffett numbers. Fortunately for Buffett, an old friend was finally coming home. Fred and the band, now called Limp Biscuit, toured for six straight months. During the extensive tour, Durst awoke to find that he had grown a small anatomically correct vagina on his chin. Tickled with pubescent curiosity, the rest of the band followed suit. Their follicular resemblance to the band Korn won them an immediate seven-figure record deal. The band was riding high, but for Fred, the darkness remained. I still didn't have enough hoes, cash money, bitches, props, kicks, rims, tims, herb, little smoke, Lucy, Just Lucinda, when inky darkness Betty, seemed Monica, its absolute Monique, darkest, Mary. Durst made an unprecedented move. Threatening to sue himself for sexual harassment, Durst settled out of court with his employer Interscope for untold millions. He was also granted the title Senior Vice President in Charge of Everything. With Fred Durst as their vanguard, the band's future looks bright. But one thing is certain, modern science will not rest until it determines how a ragtag group of individuals manages on an almost daily basis to suck its own weight in ass. From the entrepreneurial... From the peach fuzz lined limousine of boy band stardom to the organ grinding bozo band with its own product line and the pus fueled three ring cult following that made the insane clown posse the laughing stock of the music world. Their circus act is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. <laughs> Formed as a less talented but wider New Edition tribute band, New Kids on the Block paved the bubblegum road to success that is now the crossroads of Carson Daly Lane and Backstreet. But the constant pressure to remain 12 years old quickly took its toll. It was during a performance at the Northside Shopping Mall in 1994 when Danny got his first pimple. 
Maurice Starr, who discovered and castrated the band, still remembers the zit. A big, greasy white one. I couldn't put him on stage that way. The whole band would have been at risk. And the five soon began experimenting with prescription acne medicine. If we were, like, getting the second base with the bitches, we'd be using 100 oxy wipes and a tube of clear cell every night until we discovered over-the-counter industrial strength creams and suppositories. Dermatologist to the stars, Edward James Olmos, was rushed to the scene. The nodule was 6.3 millimeter in diameter. It appeared completely normal when I began slowly massaging it between my thumbs. But almost popped the pimple, opening a rare pus pressure pocket in Danny's head, causing it to burst. With no formal education, no ability to sing whatsoever, and their boyish charms as empty as their bank accounts, the group released its last album, Face the Music. Sensing their imminent demise, the four remaining new kids sought advice from the only successful musician they knew, Donnie's brother, Funky Buncher, Marky Mark. Yo, I just told him to look deep inside and discover the inner children. The rest will come natural. Realizing that nothing short of a total transformation could revive their flaccid musical careers, the kids searched their souls and their pores for answers. But since they had no soul, they went on a peyote ride through the desert with Oliver Stone. That day, inspiration struck. The band re-emerged with a new zest for life as the world's first and only hip-hop balloon animal twisting act. We tore down the birthday circuit, man! John could make a wicked dope poodle, and Joe's balloon hat was the shit! Though they had found inspiration, Donnie and Jordan sank even deeper into the nightmarish world of acne medication. It was their darkest hour. When I saw Donnie and Jordan that way, I just had to give them another shot. Their renewed faith in the good book of Bozo and an advance from Star kept the cream flowing long enough to produce an album. The group had changed its name to Insane Clown Posse and garnered a huge following among teenage acne sufferers. But the label just didn't get it. They didn't see how talent like that could burst onto the mainstream. The clowns changed their names to Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope. They established their own recording label, Psychopathetic Records, and a self-release follow-up. Since neither of us knew how to read a dictionary, and we couldn't agree on how to spell the word, we released two separate but equally flavorful albums, Bizarre and Bizarre. Bizarre and Bizarre's cotton candy-ass sound, along with the Posse's live performances and pimple-friendly food products, brought millions of crater faces under the insane clown Posse's big top. Toasted Juggalos are 100% zit-free! Stop talking and sing, monkey, sing! The boys realize there is no super cure-all cleansing pad in the greasy world that is pop music. But through it all, it takes an insane clown Posse to truly suck ass. On Munchie Man and Fatty. Damn, this shit is fresh. Yo, not fresh. Fresh. This may sound crazy, man, but I swear this looks like the work of the. Yo, 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 Fatty. You hear some? God damn, the Dutch Masters tag crew is back. Hmm, Dutch Masters. Hmm, <laughs> Dutch Masters. Munchie, fatty, right on time! On time for what? Yo, kid, I won't be gone more than 15 minutes. Half hour at the most. Uh, I want the outside. Two hours is the absolute maximum. Three hours is a possibility, but definitely ain't as much as a chance that it'll be four hours. Unless, of course, well, anyway, there's no chance we talking about more than, like, mm, I don't know, six hours. But I'm the kind of guy that likes to look see at all the motherfucking possibilities, you know what I'm saying? So there's a minor chance that I may not be back until tomorrow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up now. 
We ain't working on... There are only three things you gotta remember. The first thing is... Yo, hold up now. Uh, uh, Cla... Clav... Calvin? No, no. Calvin! Clav! Calvin! No. Cal no. Calvin! No. Nah. Calvin! That's not what it says here, brother. C-L-A-V. Calvin! 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 Yo, shut up a second and I think I get this clavy. Damn, brother! You was just at my crib last night, aqua nigga! Big D! That atomic football that blew us all up? Wait, was that bean dip there? Yeah, you get it? Yeah, that's it! Hmm, not ringing any bells, bro. Anyway, look here, Clavin. If you think me and my portly companion's gonna spend an evening with a bunch of corn dogs, chimichangas, chili cheese, fries, malt liquor, porno movies, pornography, potpourri, WCW Monday Nitro Ant Farm? Munchie! Yo, Munchie, are you listening? <laughs> Yo, I'm listening, Clavin. Damn! Okay, now there's three things you gotta remember while I'm gone. First of all, if the store's... And the second thing is, if you have... The last and most important thing... What you want me to say if your boy shows up? Dad, dog, say you me! You got my name tag on! I thought you said your name was Calvin. It is! Well, how in the hell you think we gonna fool your boss if he thinks that I'm Clavin? What in the blue Brazilians is going on here? You! Who the hell are ya? Mmm, I'm Mushroom Man. Take you some of a lot of shit. Recognize. Well, whoever you are, you're fired. Hey, hold on, man. All right, Clavin, you've convinced me. But if it happens again, you're history. Yo, man, if what happens... All right, God dangle it. Pack your crud bucket and get out. Yo, I'm... One more chance. But don't get cocky. <laughs> It's me, Clavin. I mean, fucking Calvin. Are you Duffy Bone? Yeah, man, exactly. Munchy Man's in the store just like I told you, baby. Easy money. Stiller! <laughs> oh, damn! Cursed Meteor Rigaman! No, man. First you had him in the headlock, then you smacked... <laughs> Arrival? Nigga, what? It's just a bunch of numbers. Five, four, three, two, one... So, you get my facts? Thundercracker, speak to me, brother. Who did this? <laughs> Look, 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 just relax, and, and let it out. My knee. Dutch Masters? At a time like this? Yo, come on, man. Seriously, come on, man. You know what, Fatty? I think this may have been the work of the Dutch Masters. Next time, on Munchie Man and Fatty.